In closed session, the board <coughs> considered um, item A, uh, anticipated litigation, significant exposure to litigation in two potential cases. Item B, uh, anticipated litigation, consideration of initiation of litigation, one potential case. And item C, uh, public employee appointment, interim general manager, no reportable action. Brings us to item five, open session. Brings us to item six, public comments. At this time, any person may address the board on any subject within the district's jurisdiction which is not on the agenda. However, any non-agenda matter will be referred to staff for a report and or action at a subsequent board meeting, and no action can be taken on any such item discussed unless the action has been authorized under section 54954. Period two, open parentheses, lowercase p, closed parentheses of the government code. Any person may also address the board on any agenda matter at the time that that matter is discussed prior to board consideration and action. Speakers are requested to limit comments to five minutes. Do you have anyone who would like to address the public? The board, please. Thank you. My name is Tom Mortlaw. I want to be a drip about this, but in May, uh, I brought to you the ideas we were getting early on into the conservation of water about irrigation and in particular about the drip systems. Uh, the governor uh, said that uh, these would be required on new developments, um, and there's a couple of different kinds of drip systems, but the point is that all of the conservation numbers that we're working with are based on lawns. Now we've taken our lawn out, but I have a drip system for plants that I've had for 15 years, uh, the backyard, the side yard, and so forth, and I'm starting to lose them because I'm trying to conform to 25 minutes twice a week, and the flow in a drip system is totally different than the flow of a lawn. So I think these numbers are unrealistic if we're going to encourage people, uh, other than you know, removing all vegetation, uh, that it's the lawn is one thing, but the plants are something else. And I have an article here that was from May of, t of this year, Desert Gardener, which some of you may read, pros and cons of drip irrigation, and he says that. Micro sprinklers, and they're similar to drip systems, spray water at 10 to 20 gallons of water per hour, 10 to 20 gallons per hour, compared to a lawn, which sprinkler sprays water at 3 to 5 gallons per minute, which is 1,800 to 300 gallons. So it just doesn't make sense that we don't adopt a policy that takes into account that we don't want people to just totally destroy all vegetation. But if they have plants, I have another line item, and I realize that this wasn't what we got from the governor initially, except the government's governor said, let's use drip systems. Uh, so that's my, my comments, is I would hope that in all of the agenda items that you have and the, the, the staff work that you have, <coughs> something could be done to give some allowance because I can't keep the plants that I have alive on 40, 50 minutes a week. Uh, but they're only dripping a little bit of in each, you know, each minute. It's, it takes, in drip systems, it just takes a long time to get the water there, but you're getting it where you need it. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Mr. Yeah, I, if Tom would stop by tomorrow or give me a call, we'll, I'll meet. Number one, I'll do a a rundown on what your water profile is compared to 13 currently. And number two, we're not going to be looking at people's uh, uh, drip <coughs> systems or plant watering in particular unless there's a high water usage or a wasteful water situation. <coughs> and even at that time, what we're going to do is we're going to look at your water profile to see if you're, you're complying with the intent of the law before we take some sort of adverse action. So we will have that built in, but we'll sit down and discuss. I think you make a valid point, and we can't uh, belabor this issue in public comment. 
stop by and talk to me and we, we can work through that. Just, just one other comment. The very nice uh, thing that you now put out, which says that overall we've done 18.8 percent, we need to do 28 percent in conservation. I suspect that's the heavy lifting that's that's been done. That's people took their lawns out, people let them go brown. Um, but to get from eight for, to get from 18.8 to 28 is going to require that not just we have a global RCSD number, but that we have a number for Tom Wardlaw and for everybody here. We should be able to pick up our bill and see month to month. But it's that's an area I think that you know this kind of thinking and being able to put the thermometer up for the whole organization, we're going to save a lot more money for the district if we can begin to distribute some guidelines so people can do on their own, look at their bills and understand whether they're wasting or not wasting more water. But thank you. I, I appreciate I did, your offer. And I just did my uh, profile myself, and it was staggering uh, on what we've saved. But because of that, it brought up just that uh, thing that we're talking about. If, for, if somehow we can put it on the bill so everybody can see how they were doing, how much uh, they were saving, you can do that. You can look at how many units you're using versus if you knew what you used in 13 and, and do the, the math yourself, uh, and you can tell that. But if we could do that internally uh, through our computer system or have a way to do that, we would. But I think at this point, we have to take a good look at whether or not we can even achieve that with our system right. and uh, and not drive up costs. Yeah, my bill went after I took the lawn out and stopped the water. Within about a month, the next bill went from 14 to 7 units. Um, but I'm afraid it's going to go back up if I'm trying to save these other plants. So that's But your overall water use percentage is going to be way down. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Director McKay, uh, my name is Russ Wolford. Director McKay, Director Landsgard, Director Shingledecker, I am serving you with a notice of intent to circulate a recall petition. an update on how the Rosemont Community Watch program is progressing. We had our Coffee with the Cop last Wednesday night. We had over 70 people in attendance. It was one of our best meetings ever. We had our cleanup in United Park and United Street. We also had over 70 people in attendance, which was our best cleanup ever. We don't have a wait yet, but we did get thank yous from residents in the area as well as the county because they got calls from people saying who cleaned up our mess, but thank you for doing it. So we did make a difference last weekend and we will continue to do so. We will not be having a cleanup in August because August 15th is our volunteer appreciation luncheon. Tentatively, it's going to be at Homo Hall. We're still waiting for final approval, but once it's approved, we will have live band, music, Thank you for everyone who's helped us, including a lot of you guys here tonight. So hopefully everyone can come out that day. Um, and our next meeting will be on August the 19th, Wednesday night, Homo Hall, 6 p.m. And we are continuing with our Tuesday night cleanups. It's a mini cleanup of Sierra Highway from 6.30 to 8.30 each Tuesday night. Just for those people who can't come out on Saturdays or just don't have the time to help us out, but Sierra Highway, we have cleaned the same quarter mile stretch for the past three weeks, and it needs our attention every week when we return. So we're gonna keep hitting it. It's the area right in front of the businesses, so we are making a difference. Further down the road, they really don't need the weekly attention. We'll hit that again in September, but right now we're 
we're hitting it every week and hopefully we are going to make a difference. And some of you guys notice it. Some people are throwing trash out while we're there. So, yeah. And some of our members actually want to go after them, but we're, we're trying to calm them down. But <laughs> thank everyone for supporting our program and we're not going anywhere anytime soon. Thank you. Thank you. And your headline, Vincent, for the record. Uh, two weeks ago, I stood at this podium. I addressed some issues with you gentlemen on the board about uh, your election and your platform when you ran, and the you know, Kern County Grand Jury report was issued uh, last month. And you guys only had five minutes to uh, do it two weeks ago. This is part two tonight, five minutes. Um, as I indicated, you gentlemen had this platform going around the community. Most of you folks saw this too, remember this. And I don't want to be redundant of what I did last week. So uh, this evening, uh, one of your platforms you had on your fly was, quote, it is time to vote for leadership, unquote. And obviously, gentlemen were elected in November last year, and I attended probably the majority of the meetings trying to find out, okay, what are your reasons for your platform, especially this use of district funds, and as I indicated, um, I felt like I'm in a jury, a jury box out all this time. And so far, the evidence that you say is out there, I don't find credible. That's just my opinion, what you showed me. Now, you, asked, you were asked to uh, be voted in for leadership. And now, seven months, and you're in office approximately, this report comes out from the current county grand jury over 1,700 words, and this is really a performance evaluation by our grand, grand jury for this board here. And just for the record, if I may be permitted, I'll just read, of the 23 findings that was in this document, I'll just read the first five. Quote, find number one, the evidence shows three or more directors met privately on at least one occasion to conduct district business without a posted agenda. Finding number two, some directors did not follow district tradition for the formal swearing in and seating of newly elected directors. Finding number three, during the committee's investigation and review of meeting minutes showed that the newly elected board often failed to act on agenda-sized items. Many were tabled with little or no discussion. Finding number four, directors appear ill-prepared to take action on agenda-sized items. Finding number five, evidence shows that attempts have been made to alter the minutes outside of board meetings with facts not presented in open session. I quote, I could quote more, but I don't want to take up any much time. Now, it's been no secret to all of us that this board has been trying to dismiss our general manager. There have been closed sessions regarding his performance evaluation, which I noticed on tonight's agenda, closed session. Probably employer evaluation, general manager. Now, the gentlemen asked the public here in the community to vote for a new leadership, and they did. And for the seven months, this is where apparently your leadership has brought us. Now, this is a condemnation by our grand jury. Not only that, this made the front page of our local newspapers, the Mojave Desert News, and the Animal Valley Press. Now, in my opinion, this is not very good leadership. It's very embarrassing to our community and to our community service district and me as a citizen and a voter, taxpayer, and a customer of this district. Now, it's my opinion, gentlemen, my opinion alone for the record, that I find it difficult for you to try to tell him to take a 2 by 4 out of his eyes when apparently there's an 8 by 10 in your gentleman's eyes, too. Now, this is your idea of leadership, and this intended pattern we're going to go on. It's my opinion. I think you gentlemen should step down and resign from your office. You've only been an officer seven months in your first four-year term, the honeymoon phase, and this is where our leadership, your leadership has taken us. Thank you. Comments, 
Chairman. Say welcome to everybody. Uh, yes, just a few comments. Uh, attended the Rosa Municipal Advisory Council meeting on Thursday night. Uh, prior to the meeting, we were graced with the presence of the Kern County Director of Planning. All of the Kern County Planning asked uh, Ms. Lorelei Oviat, and she was speaking on the County Housing Plan for the 2015-2023 plan, the need for affordable housing. Uh, this presentation lasts about 10 or 15 minutes. One of the things that uh, she did bring out, she did work on looking at maybe getting more single family housing too that would be more affordable for people who want to live in Roseman and work in Roseman. Something we used to have in the past with, uh, with the random rescue building rule. Our home administration loans, we to be able to build those houses. See if there's something we can do similar uh, in the future here. Uh, we also heard from the California High Speed Rail. They spoke about the bullet train and the two different routes they're, they're looking at for Rosemont. I guess I'll define at this point, I noticed in their minutes there that we have a picture of the best, I believe. I guess the picture is the old picture. Financing through bonds, private money, and the cap and trade tax. Uh, obviously, as everybody probably knows, the high speed rail is going to take a while before they get, get that bill. It'll be a long process. And then finally, August 20th, this next meeting coming up with the RMAC, uh, Dennis Schaffer confirmed that he's got Richard Allen coming to speak. Richard Allen is the CEO of the Palmville Regional Medical Center. And one of the things we need to do is obviously. Have no doctors, we should have according to uh, one uh, statistical report for the population of 20,000. We should have 31 doctors to be able to support that. As a person, as you know, most everybody goes to Lake Best for a lot of reasons, maybe support them all down there. But it would be nice at least to have a urgent care center as something we need to, uh, to, to strive for. Hopefully, we'll be able to get some input from uh, Mr. Allen. I'd like to welcome you each and every one. I attended a AVAC board meeting on July 14, 2015. The board was briefed on AB 1164. This bill started out as a transportation bill and was stripped of its content and converted to a water conservation bill. This bill has been through the House and is now going through the Senate committee hearing process. The bill contains language to provide $3 million for water conservation. $1 million is allocated for distribution when the bill is passed, and in each succeeding years, for two years after that, one more million dollar will be provided. The board also, the ADAC board also set September 8, 2015 as the water rate public hearing date, and the time of the hearing is 6.30 p.m. And on July 15th, I attended the Animal Valley Water Conservation Courts Coalition meeting. Uh, one of the things that came up at this here was that the group was briefed on a solid disposal site, and the disposal site is located on Avenue G, just east of 20th Street West. And the site is not for disposal of trash, it's just for sod. And so it's being provided for us we tear out our lawns. Uh, Mr. Perez, I sent you an email last week asking for a budget workshop. Do you have any idea when we're going to be able to have that workshop? Um, Brett, we've, um, we haven't come up with a distinct date yet. We're still working internally to see how much of that has how long it's going to take and how much time we're going to need and, and staff availability. But we'll get back to you with a definitive date tomorrow. Did you set up a meeting for next week so that the board can give you some input on the budget? Sure. Okay. One of, uh, one of the things I'd like to ask as far as the detail of the workshop, I think would help uh, staff prepare the timeline be ready to present that to you. Um, if we're going to go down as far as the staff went 
on each and every item. Uh, it's going to take, uh, what did we do, over 100 hours uh, on the budget. So trying to cram that into uh, the workshop, uh, it might be good to get some of that uh, detail ironed out on how deep you want to go into the direction. What were the three topic areas we're going to do? The three that staff did were projects, general ledgers, and funds. And I think we could just get that down to our meeting for each one of those. And I think, I think that was, that's what I would prefer to see, not something taking eight hours to do, or in this case, 33 hours to do for, for a topic. So I think filling down 33 hour level is not what I want. I received, Mr. President, I received a phone call about liens on past due bills that are passed on to, this was a real estate lady, and she's got a client that's buying a house here in Roseman, and there's an $85 past due bill on the property, and the new owners were told in order to get service, they have to pay the $85 bill. Is that correct? It is correct. That's policy. And it's current law also. The delinquent bills on a property for water or sewer stay with the property. It's not an individual incurred debt, it's a property debt. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any presentations? No presentations. Okay. We'll move to item nine informational items. First one is legal update, update on the California High Speed Rail Project. The High Speed Rail Project as it affects Rosemont. Um, this came to my attention and I thought it might be of interest uh, to the board and the community. Uh, the High Speed Rail uh, uh, Authority is going to be starting the scoping process for their sequel analysis of these two uh, proposed uh, routes one of which goes west of Land of Promise, and the other runs along the current railroad tracks through Rosemont. Um, and I wanted to bring this to your attention and let the board know that these uh, activities are ongoing and they'll be starting the scoping process. And as um, that occurs, I'll be uh, bringing additional information to you. Still looking at this one now. It's the current map on the High Speed Rail's website. Oh, is that right? Yes, it is. But just one other thing on that. It appears to go between the Lands of Promise View and the Willow Springs View, which would make sense as far as being the lowest part. That's also an area we might want to look in the future uh, for flood control. Uh, need to speak up. For flood control, it might need a dam between the Willow Springs View and the lot Lands of Promise Street. That's actually a great uh, wash that comes through there eventually. This, after these last two rains, uh, you notice that it actually happened again at this time. The water rushed through there on the 65th and it wasn't full water. That's something we might want to comment on or let them know about. And if they are going to run through there, we need to collect long term. We've got to collect them before we get half the time. Number one. Number two, uh, they're going to be compatible with that. I think when uh, we toured that area, uh, that was certainly something that I'm extremely familiar with and playing in that ditch uh, while it wasn't flooded uh, as a kid and uh, so they noted that uh, uh, portion coming through that uh, river came okay. and uh, hopefully they consider that when they put their pylons through there we're going to have to maybe something uh, regarding Who's going to do general manager update on district projects? Thank you. Uh, wastewater treatment and recycled water permit, just an update. The Title 22 report, uh, as I last reported, uh, uh, what had gone to the uh, Department of Water Resources uh, Drinking Water Division office in Bakersfield and was uh, going for uh, review and approval. Uh, 
they were going to farm it out to another um, uh, office uh, uh, to do it so it could get done quicker. Uh, come to find out uh, last, late last week that that uh, uh, other department was uh, swamped and they couldn't get to it so it came back to Bakersfield and they told me that they would have it out by the end of this week. So the Title 22 report, we're looking for it to come out uh, at the end of the week. It'll go um, to Lahontan then. Um, myself, Director uh, Glennon, uh, John Houghton and Rock Smith met with uh, JCAS and Cebus Herr from the Lahontan uh, uh, office in uh, Victorville. Uh, we met locally and discussed uh, the permitting process logistics issues that uh, we were going to be facing uh, in addition to our permitting. Um, both of the uh, permitting and the issue uh, issues that uh, uh, were presented uh, can be run on parallel courses and the issues won't uh, hamper uh, the permit process uh, as long as we have a plan to address uh, the specifics of those. Um, Staff is uh, working real hard, and by the early part of next week, should have most of the items taken care of. Some of them are locating uh, uh, and doing uh, well log uh, or videos, uh, elevations of the wells, the, the monitoring wells, um, and having uh, other uh, contractors come in to survey those because they want to survey GPS locations for them and uh, other issues that I will detail to the board in the, in the upcoming meeting. At least those reading this is like we were uh, water table next to the uh, stream in the Sierra Nevada? Or? Well, to, to some extent they're talking about the water table and, and uh, we have to uh, do a few things that uh, uh, will uh, mitigate a concern if you will. And, uh, so we'll be working on that also. That's going to be part of the plan. Um, anytime it hits the water table, whether we're a Sierra uh, stream or a brackish stream, uh, underground water. Uh, well, we're about 250 feet to the water table here. So uh, they get uh, nervous about that. So we'll be taking care of those issues. Secondly, uh, once again, uh, board meetings uh, reported in the last uh, meeting uh, would like to get further uh, discussion on that and ask that uh, uh, it be placed uh, when it comes in its proper time on the agenda for future agenda items for discussion. A resolution of the board um, uh, meetings. Uh, the meeting on July 28th uh, will be to address the resolution regarding the actions the board took yesterday. And for the community, I need to explain why we had a meeting yesterday before a regular meeting. The timing that we had was necessary to have action taken and decision made because after that, we had to get certain paperwork into the county uh, and have a notice posted on the statute with the statutory time that gets us to the 28th of uh, this month to do the hearing to adopt the resolutions and still have time to interject all of our uh, folks into the county tax roll. We should have had this all into the county before the end of June, and the county of Kern right now is waiting on us to uh, get that in, gave us a drop dead date. So those are the timelines we're trying to hit, and the 28th will allow us to make that timeline. So that's why uh, we'll be uh, uh, meeting on July 28th to adopt two resolutions. And you've already approved them. This is the formality of these resolutions have to go to the county. And they have to, what they do is they give the county the authority, official authority, from this board to levy the taxes, etc. Water rebates, uh, the term for placement rebate application is going to go out on August 1st. We have the application here. We want to give everybody the same amount of time 
uh, to apply. It will also be online and uh, we urge you if you're going to replace your turf uh, to put in an application. We'll come out and inspect and after you've done the work we'll come out and re-inspect and for those of you that have already reported and requested us to pre-inspect uh, and want to fill out an application, please do because we have you know we have the photographs and uh, we'll process you also. And after the project's completed, the reinspection will be done, and then uh, within 30 days uh, you'll receive uh, a check. You'll be notified prior to uh, receiving any type of reimbursement uh, that you were chosen for the reimbursement will qualify each project on its own merit based on uh, the biggest bang for our buck, if you will, because we've only got $600 to apply to each project. There's, on the application, it's very innocuous. It's uh, uh, got about five bullet points that you have to adhere to, and if you can, uh, fill those out, get them back into us. Uh, what is the time we're going to give a two-week period to get those back. Um, most of the pe most people will take their lawns out, but not replant their their stuff until the cooler months. But we're going to give after the approval. After you've gotten the approval, uh, we're going to give you 90 days uh, to complete your project. After the completion is when we're going to issue the money. That way, nobody's getting the money and not do the project and run with the money. So, uh, Tom, I've got you noted. <coughs> You're the first, actually. Well, yeah, I was not looking for for approval of a project that I've already done and paid for. So, I'm in a position where I, all I can do is provide the photos that I showed to the board previously and the dates and the, any other information that's if that puts me in the running that's all I'm concerned about we we'd already seen those and, and I had already approved that as a pre-inspection uh, and and truly I appreciate you coming to the board and telling us you did that so we could I've had several that have called me and asked me to come out and I ran out there taking pictures and told them yes you're good if you want to do something let your lawn die go ahead because they're uh, complying with the uh, conservation. I told them, go ahead, I've got this documented. Another one a couple days ago, right across the street, uh, was the same thing. So, you did hear he said, him say you were first on the list, didn't you? <laughs> you were the first that I quasi expected <laughs> on the list. <laughs> We had uh, the recent storm was a, a welcome to everybody, and hopefully you all had a little bit of green in your, in your uh, yellow grass uh, come in. We did. It took uh, one day for the green to pop out. We're in three days, and the ground at my yard is dry as a bone. And uh, but it was welcome, and uh, but it did some damage, and it did damage uh, in our district to over 10,000. And I'm going to let John uh, give you a little bit more specifics on what was damaged. But one of the things that uh, Kern County did is they got hit really hard, and they declared an emergency. And they're urging the governor to approve Kern County as an emergency county in regard to this past storm and the damage that was caused. They've contacted us and asked us to put our list of damage that was uh, caused by the storm and get it into them to be lumped into the total amount that they go to the uh, state for uh, for some uh, reimbursement monies for damages. So that's a good uh, a good note. We'll, we'll end up uh, spending some ten thousand to fix what we have to fix now. So that's the end of my report. And thank you. Any questions for Colonel? Group Guidance 3, Assistant General Manager, Public Works Superintendent. Wow. Well, as I reported yesterday, the problems that we have, we've got most everything fixed. Um, the only thing that's lacking is still our well 
late. We ordered the parts. The parts came in today, and then I'm just going to install it tomorrow. Um, if you want specifics on the uh, uh, numbers, I have uh, the well eight cost was fifty nine hundred dollars exactly. Um, tank four was three hundred and fifty times two, so seven hundred dollars on tank four site, and uh, three hundred and fifty dollars for the liquid level control on tank three. And I'm still waiting on a quote for one other SCADA item. So we're probably right around 10 grand when it gets all done. You mentioned before that the level had dropped to 11 feet. 11 feet, yes. In what tank? Tank 3, <coughs> the one right above us. And, and tank 3 and tank 2 run within 6 inches of each other. So. Uh, what's the level now? I, was, I haven't checked it lately, but this morning it was back up to 17 feet. We normally run it between 19 and 20. So we exercise the tanks up and down. So as of this morning, they're in pretty good shape. So eight back on line. No, well, nine is doing the whole load. Is because people aren't watering as much out of the rain? Yeah. Okay. Um, the Public Works Department, they've uh, started reading the meters for this month. They've uh, installed two new service lines across the street at the homes of the Legacy Track. They fixed four leaks since the last meeting. Um, they continue to do uh, sewer inspections also on the legacy track. And uh, they repaired one angle stop, one, excuse me, one angle stop for the Sierra Highway 3303 trailer park. And that's all I have. Brings us to item four, district accounting, fiscal update, Mr. Robert Lane. Today's update is going to be a little bit different than normal. Uh, typically during this meeting I would provide the board with a budget to actual comparison uh, for the quarter ended in June. However, because we're a government and we operate under the modified accrual basis of accounting, uh, our books don't close until August 31st before June 30th. So that report won't be available to you until after August 31st for the year ended June 30th. However, I did want to take a moment to update you on a couple of things uh, going on in the finance department. Our new auditors were here uh, from June 1st uh, to June 5th doing their interim audits. They were interviewing staff, looking at processes, procedures, controls, uh, asking questions, looking at documents. Um, we got a clean bill of health, so to speak. They were in and out in three and a half days uh, based partially on preparedness of the staff, um, so I'd like to commend the staff on that. Um, another one of the audit comments that we've been getting in prior years is a lack of an inventory tracking system. Uh, I've been working diligently with John Houghton and his crew out back to implement the SEMS software inventory tracking program, and I'm happy to announce that when the auditors came on June 30th to do an inventory count, it was crystal clear. Uh, so I'd like to congratulate John uh, and his guys, Brock Smith and Eli Torres, really took, uh, took this under the wing, took it very seriously, um, have organized all of the inventory, counted it, and have implemented a project costing method uh, for signing inventory items in and out so that we have a perpetually correct inventory. Uh, my understanding that's never been done before. Ever. All the records that I've found historically have been done by hand. Um, the auditors will be back to do what they call their field work, which is their substantive uh, audit testing on the week of Memorial Day, so following the Memorial Day holiday, they'll be here on the 8th, uh, maybe 11th or so. Labor Day. I'm sorry, yes, thank you, Labor Day. I want to go back to May. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm anticipating a, a very clean and efficient audit. Um, staff has done a really good job so far this year of keeping things up to speed, nothing is behind, we are current to date. Um, one thing that I would like to alert the board members to is typically during this process they ask to interview at least two or three of you uh, to talk about your understanding of the district, the operations, um, and it's usually a private conversation, so um, just be alert that if you're called to participate, it's a 
perfectly normal thing for the auditors to ask to do. Um, the final budget, as we just talked about, uh, is underway and we are writing it as we speak. Um, it is scheduled to be adopted on August 26th, uh, which is the last board meeting uh, before it goes into kind of a default position under the uh, requirement. Uh, we will be scheduling some budget workshops as requested, and uh, just kind of on a, on a fun note, uh, after all of the bills were paid and posted to the general ledger today, uh, I ran the numbers year to date, and we are within $775 of budget to actual, which is less than one, less than one half of 1% of accuracy. Okay. That's all. Thank you. Any questions? We'll move to item 10, discussion and work. Uh, yes, as you are aware, uh, the district received a report from the Grand Jury uh, County Services and Special Districts Committee of the 2014-2015 Kern County Grand Jury. Uh, that report made certain findings and recommendations. And uh, tonight, it is my intent to go through with you the uh, various findings and uh, staff recommended responses to each of those, as well as the um, responses to the recommendations. So unless uh, you have another approach you'd like me to take, I would dive straight in. Okay. Uh, finding one was that evidence shows three or more directors met privately on at least one occasion to conduct district business without a posted agenda. Uh, recommended response is that the report uh, is unclear as to the date and time of participants uh, and therefore the board uh, cannot uh, respond uh, to it as stated. Uh, finding two, some directors did not follow district tradition for the formal swearing in and seating of newly elected directors. Uh, recommended response is to agree with this finding, but note that uh, the new directors created a new tradition for swearing in and seating that adheres to the law. Finding three, during the committee's investigation, a review of the meeting minutes showed that the newly elected board often failed to act on agendized items. Many were tabled with little or no discussion. Uh, this one, a recommended response is that uh, it is unclear uh, to which meetings, which minutes, uh, and which events uh, this refers to, and therefore uh, disagree. Uh, finding four, directors appear ill-prepared to take action on agendized items. Um, recommended response is to disagree with the finding and uh, note it is uh, an opinion. Uh, finding five, evidence shows that attempts have been made to alter the minutes outside of board meetings with facts not presented in open session. And uh, again, uh, the recommended response is that uh, it is unclear as to the date, time, and participants relating to the, uh, the asserted uh, evidence and therefore disagree. Uh, finding six, Transcription of meeting minutes created unnecessary costs and delays for the district. Uh, recommended response is to partially disagree, state and agree that the cost for the transcription of meeting minutes was high, but disagree that the delays were uh, unnecessary. Finding seven, uh, since the seating of the new board, approval of minutes has been delayed beyond reasonable time limits. Recommended response uh, is to disagree with the finding uh, and uh, note that there's uh, obtaining accurate minutes does not have a time limit. Uh, find, finding eight, delays in approving minutes held up bill payment for, and other district business. Uh, the re recommended response is to disagree uh, and that note that the delays in approving minutes do not affect payment of the bills because the bills are paid prior to the meeting. Finding nine, at the April 21, 2015 meeting, public comment proceeded in an orderly and timely fashion. Recommended response is to agree. Finding 10, uh, 
directors were difficult to see and comments were difficult to hear due to members being seated behind a dais, which had an unusually high front. Whispered conversations between directors were inappropriate. The uh, recommended response is to partially disagree, uh, noting that upgrades to the dais and sound system would be beneficial, uh, but disagree that directors were difficult to see and comments were difficult to hear, uh, and agree that whispered conversations, uh, if any, are inappropriate. Uh, finding 11, action item votes did not follow proper parliamentary procedure. Recommended response is uh, to <clears throat> state that it is unclear as to the date, time, and participants related to the alleged improper parliamentary procedure. Note that the directors participated in a parliamentary procedure course on June 4th and uh, disagree with the finding. Finding 12, during tw public comment, directors extended the meeting length by responding to several comments. Uh, the recommended response is that it's unclear as to which particular public comment period the report refers. Uh, and note again that the directors participated in a parliamentary procedure course on June 4th. Uh, finding 13, the 45 year old rate of $1 per month is insufficient to cover lighting costs and maintain a reserve. Uh, the recommended response is to partially disagree with the finding, uh, to agree that it is that the uh, rate is 30 years old, not 45. Uh, finding 14, uh, the original sewer rate study did not take into account unoccupied residences. Uh, the recommended response is to a great. Uh, 15. Uh, previous board, upon legal advice, chose to place sewer fees on the tax roll to capture direct and indirect operating costs. Uh, the recommended response is to agree with the finding. Finding 16, placing sewer fees on the property tax bill increased the sewer fee collection rate and may allow parcel owners to claim a deduction on their federal income tax. Um, recommended response is uh, that the finding states a uh, legal and, and tax advice that it would be improper for the board to state, but to note that the Kern County Tax Assessor has a mind that sewer fees on the tax bill may be claimed as a deduction on customers' federal income tax returns. So, well, finding 17, that? the current board voted to rescind the previous board's action <coughs> and combine the sewer bill with the water bill. Uh, the recommended response is to partially disagree with the finding, um, to disagree with the characterization of rescission, and instead state that uh, the board's direction was to resume responsibility for the collection of the sewer service fee by the district. Finding 18, moving the sewer bill back to the water bill will decrease sewer fund <coughs> revenues. The response uh, is to disagree with the finding and note that it is speculation. Finding 19, the district is overdue for water and sewer rate studies. The recommended response is to agree uh, and to note that those studies should have been conducted prior to the November 2014 election. Finding 20, most directors appear to lack sufficient understanding of water rates, including tiered rate structures. Uh, recommended response is to disagree and uh, state that the board understands the district's rate structures and new case law associated herewith. Finding 21, the district has approached the Kern County Board of Supervisors to terminate the agreement with the operation of Rogue's Maintaining Pool and Recreation Center. No money has been allocated to the 2015-2016 district budget for recreational activities. Recommended response is to agree with this finding. Uh, and note that the district receives inadequate revenues to provide recreational activities and services. Finding 22, the staff provides background information on district business to directors for agenda items. The recommended response is to agree. Finding 23, interaction between directors and district staff appeared to be strained, and this prolonged district business during the April 21, 2015 meeting. The recommended response is to agree and note that the April 2021 2015 board meeting was partially extended due to the board taking sufficient time to listen on to all constituents' comments. We have a break for a moment. <coughs> okay.
Moving on to the recommendations. Um, there are 12 recommendations. <coughs> recommendation one, uh, the, board, the first recommendation, board should comply with the Brown Act at all times. Recommended response is to state that the recommendation has already been implemented and will continue to be improved and note that the board participated in parliamentary procedure training on June 4th, 2015. <coughs> recommendation two, individual directors should meet with staff prior to board meetings to better to be better informed regarding district business. The recommended response is to state that it has already been implemented and will continue to be improved to the extent possible in compliance with the Brown Act. And note that the general manager will, within one month of the, of, of, uh, the response, establish office hours the week preceding the regular board meetings during which he'll be available to meet the board members on an individualized basis. Recommendation three. Uh, the board should approve meeting minutes in a timely manner. Uh, recommended response is that it has already been implemented and will continue to be improved upon. And note that since March of 2015, all meeting minutes have been approved at the next, it have been approved in a timely manner. A recommendation four, uh, directors should be educated on agendized items in order to have focused discussion and prevent excessive tabling. Uh, recommended response is that it has already been implemented and will continue to be improved upon. And uh, note that the general manager will be establishing office hours the week preceding regular board meetings to be available for board members on an individualized basis. Recommendation five, director of the I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I, I, I thought someone couldn't hear me. No, you're fine. Okay. Recommendation five, director vote should be by roll call and audible to all in attendance. Um, recommended response is that the recommendation will not be implemented because it is not warranted. And note that the clerk of the board announces the votes and if not unanimous, the particular directors who vote may. Recommendation six, the street lighting fund should generate funding sufficient to cover costs and build reserve. Um, recommended response is that the recommendation has not been implemented but will be in the future. And to note that the district is undertaking the process required position, pursuant to Proposition 218 to seek additional funding for lighting. Recommendation 7, before taking any action on sewer rates, the board should approve a new sewer rate study which takes into account unoccupied residence rates. The recommendation, recommended response is that the recommendation has not yet been implemented but will be in the future. The district has engaged a consultant to prepare a sewer rate study. Recommendation 8, the sewer fund should generate funding sufficient to cover costs and maintain the proper reserve. Recommended response is that the recommendation is not yet been implemented but will be and that the district is engaged to consult for a sewer rate study. Recommendation nine, the district should conduct a water rate study before proposing new water rates. Recommended response, the recommendation is not yet been implemented but will be in the future. The district is engaged to consult to prepare a water rate study. Recommendation 10, Directors should educate themselves on the differences and consequences between flat and tiered water rates. The recommended response is that the recommendation is not yet been implemented but will be in the future. The study of flat and tiered water rates is part of the water rate study to be prepared by the district's consultant. Recommendation 11, the director should do research prior to further action regarding parks and recreation. Uh, recommended response is the recommendation has been implemented. Each director has reviewed the 2006 master plan for parks. Recommendation 12, the Board of Directors and District Staff should work to improve their interactions. Uh, recommended response is the recommendation has not yet been implemented but will be in the future and the General Manager will be establishing office hours the week preceding regular board meetings during which will be available to meet board members on an individualized basis. That is the recommended uh, responses to each of the findings and the uh, Recommendations by the grantor. And the intent is to bring back a resolution at the next board meeting, meeting for adoption. If you need any help with those changed minutes, I have them all. So we have dates. When those minutes were changed, were, were added to, we, we have all we have all of those. So we do have dates on them. So 
when you put in here, you don't, don't take my picture. Um, when you say you don't have dates, we have them. And we'll be gladly give them to you. I'm sorry. I can't I have no choice. I have no choice. I have no choice. No choice? Yes, you do. I don't. Don't work for that man. It's wonderful. <laughs> I'm saying there's something, something just ain't quite back here. Just for the record, Glenn Vincent. The council, I just had a question. If some of the plans you recommend response was a clear date, time, sort of like that. Is that correct? But just for the record, did you or anybody on this board make any attempt to contact the grand jury committee? And inquire exactly what specifically days and times we required or talking about. So that was that effort ever made by you or or anybody? Because if you're if you're if you're telling us for the record at this public meeting that some of the days and times are clear as to what some of these findings occurred, that you called the County Grand Jury asking, okay, what exactly are the dates and times that you require that to so get some clarity on this? Yeah, that's just their general call. The Kern County answer. Grand Jury disbanded uh, immediately after this report was issued. The 2014-2015 Grand Jury disbanded. They're, they're not there. The individuals who made this report are no longer there. So what date did you disband? This is just parking out June 11th, is that correct? Mm. I don't know the exact date they disbanded. Yeah. All right. So, is there any Board other was, avenue we can? What? Reportedly went out in the 18th. I believe they just banned them on the 15th. Yeah. <laughs> and are you just going to be out in the So, is there some other avenue that can be pursued to uh, get specifics of some of these uh, questions as to dates and time? The communications between the grand jury and the individuals they speak with are confidential. So there's no way they, don't, they didn't provide that information to the district in the report. Is there any other legal avenue we can be pursued? Yes. If it's confidential. Not that I can think of. I refuse to capture on the grounds of being criminal. Not that I can think of. Or discrimination. <laughs> what specifically is confidential? The communications that the, the grand jury's working papers, their communications with individuals, their interview notes, their interview recordings, if any, all held confident by the grand jury. So there's no way you know, one to find out they're not those shared. unsealed or anything that are unconfidential? I, 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 haven't, I haven't attempted that, so I, I, I can't answer that. Is it possible you could pursue that for us so we can know? Okay, so directed by the witness. Thank you. It's your leadership. That this board is not taking this grand jury report very seriously. And by denying pretty much everything on here except for uncontested items like F-14, the original sewer rate study did not take into account unoccupied residences. So that's that's not a commendation of the board. That's just a statement of fact that uh, the previous board didn't include those. So it doesn't, uh, it's not a, uh, but, you know, when you go back to um, the one that, that popped out at me, was it uh, F-5? Evidence shows that attempts have been made to alter the minutes outside of board meetings with facts not presented in open session. And that goes back to the minutes of December 3rd and two meetings in November 14th. And I stood up here, the reason I popped out is because I stood up here at this dais. And I made the comment that Director Landsguard was attempting to add over 2,000 words to the minutes mm -hmm. of stuff that was not spoken in this room by the previous board. Former Director Spore stood up and addressed the same issue. To this, so on that one item to sit there and deny it like it didn't happen mm -hmm. is just wrong. So 
So I'm hoping that this board will look at these recommendations by council and not go with the recommendations, but actually take this grand jury report, take it serious, like it, the document it is, and address these issues head on, and not just sweep them under the rug. Thank you. You said the recommended. No, what is your recommended response? Was that between the four of you? Oh, yeah, the recommended. No. Who recommended the response? It was not unanimous. Thank you. That's all you need to say. Okay, we'll move to item B: discussion regarding termination of legal counsel contract and hiring a new attorney. Ms. Harris, are you here? I just went outside. Here knows 
Um, I will continue with the um, premise that uh, she is slowing down, or you're slowing down. You're the ones that have made her the target, not her. When you came on this board, you said she will work for us, and us only. And every little thing that you want, you have put on Allison. I don't really blame you personally for this. I blame them. And each month, I will ask for her billing. And eventually, somehow or another, we're going to get the billing hours that states what she is what she is billing for, not just a vague amount, management, uh, projects. A breakdown. A, we, a breakdown. A breakdown. Yes, <laughs> of what she is actually billing for. And we really need that because I mean, th these amounts are just ludicrous, and they're all coming out of our pockets. You know, you're only paying a small share there. We're all paying here for what you're doing to her. So think about it and um, come up with a better solution to your problems. Maybe the first solution should be that you go in and speak to your general manager about problems prior to a meeting. Instead, you come up with a problem and you turn it right over to Allison. Allison is an attorney, and she is going to bill. She, that is her job. Nope. That is not up to you guys, though, not to be informed about what is going on in this district, and then putting other things on her to do that are ludicrous. That it, I mean, I know I've said that more than once, but to me it is ludicrous. It's really out, you know, out there. And so you guys need to, um, you know, think about what you're doing. Just one comment. I've been coming to these board meetings for quite a while, long before a lot of you were coming. My question to you is, is her feeling that much different than what the bill of the other attorney was. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's why we're complaining. Yes. Are they doing the same amount of work or more? I believe the other attorney had a cap in his contract. Well, if our other attorney was so good, then why didn't he, excuse me, you go ahead now, I'll not later. That, that's my question. Is is the billing that much different? Because oh, yeah. the reason I'm asking is because everything that is said is almost like it's a certain group here that um, they disagree with everything. They disagree with just about everything that is taking place. But those of you that is disagreeing, you were not here prior to the election. You're absolutely right. You were some was, but the majority were not because this room had a lot of vacancies. After they were elected, somebody elected them. After their election, and it appears as if then you had a lot to say. But prior to that, not so. Because you were not here. And I'll answer that. It's probably because before the prior board, we have faith in them. And this board, we don't have faith in them. I have a question. This is off of the billing for the attorney for, it was the document date was May 31st. Due date is June 30th. This is just one month one, two, three, four billings for the attorney for the month of May or that bill date, the attorney fees was $68,781.14. That's just a, a one month period. 
Yeah. Ma'am, that's, that's incorrect. Um, I, I understand, but billings roll through, and there's a timing issue between payment and when okay. they bill. So a majority of that has been reduced by the prior month's bill. Okay, so but still the, the, the total between February and June is at $132,000? I don't have that information in front of me. Um, this was the public record of the invoice. Anyway, the only I'm bringing it up is because it seems a little hypocritical because I remember a newspaper article that was written by Olaf Landsgard and it was printed in this Roseman paper. He complained that the former attorney was paid seven thousand dollars for one month. And you just went on and on and how bad that was. It's a little hypocritical when this is going. Money keeps drying up. Right on, Cal. In response to your question, ma'am? Yes. Your hundred and thirty two thousand dollar figure is correct. Thank you. My timing may have been off, but it is a correct invoice, the, the amount. President Kay, may I speak? I represent a CPA firm throughout the state of California that represents municipalities all over the state. Legal fees of this nature are not uncommon. However, in response to the, to the comment, is she charging, is this firm charging more than the last firm in total? The answer is yes. They are. Legal counsel is an employee of the board. They do not report to staff. So whatever any attorney charges any municipality <coughs> is at the direct direction of the board. Uh -huh. These fees for general matters for which any law firm that we procure will have a retainer. And this particular law firm's retainer is the same as it is at every other city I represent in the state. It is the scope of services outside the general matters that have gone over and above right. the budgeted amounts. That's right. So it's the scope of service. That's why we need a detailed account. Thank you. That doesn't address the question why it's three or four times more than previous years. That was the original question, wasn't it? Yes. The reason okay, that it... We all understand lawyers' cost money. We know that. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, the reason well, it's so much more is because she's been called upon by this board on, <laughs> the board on, on so many, on so many things. Why does the board do it more? Yes. You have to keep asking questions. Let, let yeah. Ask your board. They did. They were. They never got an answer. One of the things you might want to look at is that it's a little deceptive to say that Mr. Gibson was only paid seven thousand dollars a month when he stuck through the forty-nine thousand dollar bill on December third, uh, two thousand fourteen. In addition to what he was being paid, there's no question about that. Oh, no. The other, the other thing, there is no question about that. You can look up at the third Oh, yeah. Was there an 84K cap per year? Well, no. Well, so apparently, he got paid the forty-nine thousand dollars just as he got uh, before he just got before he got the So, so that he it was paid over his contract. contract. Yes. Okay. And the other thing is, uh, well, that answers it. I'm, I'm familiar with uh, not as many municipalities as Mr. Uh, uh, Rockabout is, but yeah, you can look at, for example, the city of California City, the city with about the same size budget we have. They don't care about California. And, they're, and they're, uh, their legal fees are substantially more than what we've ever paid for our attorneys. Their budget's like 10 times ours. <laughs> oh, well, that's fine. And we're not Cal City. Their budget's probably about 10 million dollars. I would just say, look at the last four years, and we're already going out of what the last four years were. Whatever it's used for. Sir, uh, good evening, board. Uh, you brought up the point, people got to get paid. The question I asked, when are we going to stop paying the numbers out? She's entitled to her basic fee. That's agreed upon. But outside of that, when are we going to get to the business of running the district and not running to her because no one should work for free? Yeah. So that's what she's saying, this is my bill because I don't work for free. Yeah. So are we that dysfunctional as a group, as a family, as a community, 
that we got to generate a hundred and some thousand dollars. I don't know. I'm not going to get into the numbers because I'm not privy to those type. But again, I keep saying we know what the problem is. We have a solution to the problem. Olaf talks about, he just compared us to Cal City. That's an apple to an orange. That's a city. We're not a city. This is a special district. That's a city government. So then Alfred's talking about, yeah, I'm right. Alfred, the only time you bring up a comment is when you think you have a comment about nothing that amounts to nothing. So I'm going to ask again. We know what we're doing. We've got a lot of legal fees pending. Are we working on slowing those down? Because two things are going to happen. If we keep asking her questions, she's entitled to get paid. If she's entitled to get paid, then do we go bankrupt because we're not mature enough as a community to do the thing as a team? You don't have to like your teammates to win. There's a lot of major league teams that win a lot of championships and they don't hang out in the summertime or the wintertime. All I'm asking is that every week we point fingers at one another. If you're pointing a finger at someone, there are a couple pointing back. Let's get on board and say, what are we going to do? Because whatever fee she's entitled, I would never begrudge someone not getting paid. But what are we doing to avoid having to pay her the fees? That's the only question I have. And I'm not going to go up here and say, is it too much, too little? Because if you work, you should get paid. But what are we doing to eliminate having to pay all the fees? Because if someone, uh, uh, Director Wallace says, yeah, we call her up. Are we calling her up for everything or things that are pertinent? I don't know. But maybe we should think about that and see if we can slow that down a little bit because we don't get a repeat on those dollars. Those dollars are gone. Once we pay her, those dollars are gone. So maybe we should think about us working as a group, the staff, the directors, the, the uh, GM, and the, uh, the uh, legal and the uh, accountant here to avoid that because at the rate we're going, we're going to maybe have a half million dollars in fees. I don't know the exact total numbers, but we have a half million dollars in legal fees. We're trying to go out some point and buy water we got an adjudication coming, we still, I don't hear the word chloramine, I mean, uh, the uh, chromium issue, or arsenic issues come up anymore. Those are our realities. Fighting about the attorney fees that you folks generate, maybe you guys should make peace with that and move forward because that's all we hear. We're stuck in neutral. We're stuck in neutral. We're not moving past the fact that someone on that board, I don't know who that someone is, asked the questions that generates her fees. Now, I'm not going to begrudge her for getting paid, but maybe we need to look beyond calling her up every week and do some studying, do some asking, and do some trusting. I'm done in that one. Thank you. Anyone else? Let's move on to one. Each time, with the general manager's direction, we requested several legal firms to apply. Each time there was an interview of candidates and a vetting of by the entire board. The manner in which we terminated our last legal counsel has resulted in legal costs due to litigation by that counsel, current and ongoing costs to ratepayers. I believe our current legal counsel has actually decided on before the new board took office, even though the vote was not taken at a regular meeting. Finding one in the grand jury may be directed towards this issue. I reviewed one uh, proposal from the services from the Churchy, the Churchy Law that was not considered or discussed. I reviewed the proposal for services from Strandling, our current legal counsel. I had several questions that were not addressed. The only thing I requested from our legal counsel is a totaling of the billings for different aspects of her service. Uh, e on the consent agenda today is a billing from June 30th to July 13th for $46,187.41. Um, I think some of this I take calls from many different sources, and beyond that, getting into what is said and what I'm asked to do would be disclosing and training client privilege. They can only cycle on the law, can't they? More public discussion. We move to item 11. Senate calendar. We have 
Okay. Item A, approved the regular board meeting, board meeting minutes, June 10th, 2015. Approved special board minutes, meeting minutes, June 17th, 2015. C, cash balances, May 2015 report received and filed. D, fourth quarter treasurer's report received and filed. E, approved check slash voucher register dated June 30th, 2015 to July 13th, 2015. Second. 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 Okay. We move and second. Any public discussion? Hearing them, we'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> aye vote. Item 12, outstanding items, written communication. Okay. Item 2, request for future agenda items. Uh, I would request that a need for the general, a uh, intern general manager be discussed on the agenda I have an agenda item on the, no, uh, the next open session regular meeting. Great. The need for an interim general manager I want discussed at the next regular meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Um, Mr. Wardlaw brought up a good point. We need to revise our state street parameters. We never got around to that. Uh, that's bad on the agenda before. Uh, Are you talking about the drip irrigation item? Drip irrigation is part of it, but overall, we need 25 minutes a day, two days a week. Uh, that type of thing. Uh, that, what we're shooting for is 25 percent reduction. We need to make that clear. We need to deal with it every day in a way that actually affects our community, not the way some of this came out of that. I recognize that. That's why I invited him to come by and to sit down. I'll hammer out something that uh, complies with the intent, but also takes into consideration uh, what he was talking about. Uh, I recognize it, and what you have to understand, what we have in the state right now is a plan. They have a copy of that plan. If we make an adjustment, it's not wrong. It's just we have to notify them that we have taken that into consideration and made that adjustment. I think your direction. Uh, is is good enough, and we, I don't think you have to take that board time to do that. Well, well, hearing from like media members are all concerned they want they want to follow what we said. We passed the thing two months ago. What we said, the directive says one thing, and what we're saying now is another. But we need to make sure that people know that the alternative is there and it needs to be part of policy. It can't be just something. It's something else. Uh, we, but for us to count, it's got to be known to everybody. I think it has to be part of the policy. We need to set that up. State resource support is an adjustment of life. I'd like to have the item that I reported as far as uh, the issue of board meetings, frequency. Uh, item 13, the journey. Are we done? So moved. Second it. Yeah, catch you off. Wait, 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 before you vote. Was there a public comment? Yes, yes. there was. He just before we adjourned. Well, Foley just kind of didn't want to hear it, so he passed that on. Agenda items. Oh, agenda items. President Pence. Okay. There was an arm up. I'm oh, sorry. If you would please revoke the adjournment. Move to second it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I'll tell you the amount of water that they're wanting to take. Okay, go ahead. 2,400 acre feet. Okay. Which is, and I don't know if you know what an acre foot is. 325,828 gallons. So they're getting 2,400 of those. Okay. So it's a lot. Yes. So I don't want to disclose who they are because they may not want their customers knowing what they're doing. 
Definitely. Okay. Thank uh, you. And the purple pipe, uh, we're still waiting for our budget to go through. We approved the budget as one of our capital improvement projects. But being we're in a, a slight deficit in the budget, that project may get put on the back. I don't know. It's up to 